Rainbow Weaver by Linda Elubitz Marshall and Elisa Chabari. <clears throat> High in the mountains above Lake Atalin, Ishel watched her mother weave thread into a fabric as beautiful as a rainbow. The fabric had blues as clear as the sky, reds as bright as the flowers, and yellows as gold as the corn. Mama, Ixchel asked, may I weave too? Her mother shook her head. Not now, Ixchel, she answered. This cloth is for the market. If it brings a good price, it will help pay for your school and books. <clears throat> in and out, in and out. Eggshell's mother and neighbors wove on backstrap looms. They wove as their mothers, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers had done before them, as Mayan women had done for more than 2,000 years. After a while, Eggshell asked, Mama, may I weave now? Again, her mother shook her head. Count threads with me, my love. I'll show you how we make designs. Eekshell and her mother counted together. Hmm, ka'ai, oxai, kujai. With each additional color, the cloth grew longer and the design prettier. Eekshell reached for some thread. Please, she asked. No, my love, answered her mother. You are still too young and there is no extra thread. Yigshel crossed her arms and studied the hard packed dirt of the yard. I want to weave. I want to help pay for my books and school too, she thought, but she didn't say anything. Instead, she walked toward the Mipa, the field where the villagers planted corn beans, and squash. Plastic bags littered the path. Day after day, more bags were tossed from windows of passing vehicles or discarded by people returning from market. No one could use all the bags, and there was nowhere to put them all. Pushing the bags aside, Ixchel gathered branches and sticks. Some of the sticks were long and some were short. She carried the sticks and branches home, then tied them together. What are you doing? A neighbor asked. Making a loom, Ixchel answered. Her mother smiled. But Ixchel, she said, we don't have any extra thread. I know, Mama, she answered. I won't take any. Eekshell tied one end of her loom to a tree. Then she gathered tall blades of pigeon grass. Sitting on the ground, Eekshell joined the blades of grass together by knotting the end of one blade to the end of another until she made a long chain. Then she pushed the batten over and under, back and forth, turning the blades of grass into fabric. When the fabric was finished, it was too small to be a doormat or even a placemat. It was too scratchy to wear as a bracelet. Worst of all, it was a dull greenish white. The fabric was far too small, too, far too scratchy, and far too dull for anyone to buy. Eekshell knew it would never sell. Disappointed, Eekshell took another walk climbing the path villagers took to bring sheep up the mountain. She saw a clump of black wool hanging from a branch. Eggshell tucked the wool under her belt. She noticed more clumps of black and white wool dotting the grasses, sticks, and plants. 
Evesha gathered this wool and tucked it under her belt too. At home, Eekshell turned and twisted the wool, spinning it as a long, thick strand of yarn. Then over and under, back and forth, she pushed the batten and wove the yarn into fabric. Eekshell looked at what she had woven. The fabric was thick and heavy. The colors were boring. Tiny pieces of grass and dirt were stuck in the fabric. The weaving was far too thick far too boring, and far too dirty for anyone to buy. Tears rolled down Eekshell's cheeks. There's no way my weaving will sell in the market, she thought. No way I can help. Wiping the tears, Eekshell headed toward the Milpa again. Along the way, she kicked aside a plastic bag. Red, purple, orange, green, yellow, and blue bags were everywhere. They were in the fields, drooping from branches and clogging roads and ditches. There were so many bags, it was hard for her to walk. Angrily, Eekshell picked up a bag and ripped it to shreds. Suddenly, she had an idea. Eekshell gathered bag after colorful bag. She took the bags home, washed them, and hung them to dry. Now what are you doing, An another neighbor asked. Eekshell smiled. You'll see, she answered. By the next day, the bags were dry. Eekshell cut each bag into long, thin strips. She tied the strips together. Sitting at her loom, Eekshell pushed the batten over and under, back and forth weaving until she had used all the strips. The fabric was short, but it was clean and colorful. It had blues as clear as the sky, reds as bright as the flowers, and yellows as golden as the corn. The fabric looked like a beautiful rainbow, almost as pretty as the weavings of her mother, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers before her. Wondering what else she could make with plastic bags, Eekshell headed back to the Milpa. As she gathered more bags, the path looked cleaner and the countryside prettier. When Eekshell returned home, her mother and neighbors were waiting with colorful plastic bags. We saw what you were doing, said a neighbor. We wanted to help. And without the bags everywhere, our village looks pretty again, said another neighbor. Eekshell thanked them. Then she handed the weaving to her mother and said, my first rainbow. Her mother hugged her close. It's beautiful, my love, she said. Thank you, Mama, Eekshell said. But do you think it will sell? Let's take it to the market and see, said her mother. At the market the next day, Eekshell and her mother watched as people walked by the stalls. Finally, a woman stopped. She picked up Eekshell's weaving and asked, Did you make this? When Eekshell nodded, the woman smiled. Her weaving sold, and for a very good price. Eekshell beamed with happiness. Now she could help pay for her books in school, and like her mother, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers before her, Eekshell had woven a rainbow. The Mayan people in contemporary Guatemala are among the most skilled artistic weavers in the world, yet they face many problems, poverty, lack of education, and unemployment. To earn money for food and education, Mayan weavers have begun repurposing plastic bags as threads that they weave on traditional backstrap looms until ancient patterns, using ancient patterns and techniques. The Mayan weavers now employ plastic threads as well as traditional threads to create beautiful purses, clutch bags, placemats, coasters, pencil cases, and baskets. Sold through fair trade cooperatives in the United States and other countries, their products bring much needed money to the weavers' families. At the same time, the weavers help clean their villages and keep traditional Mayan cultural values alive. Mayan Hands, an organization of weavers in Guatemala, 
was begun in the late 1980s by my dear friends, Guatemalans Brenda Rosenbaum and her late husband, Freddie, in their adopted home city of Albany, New York. Brenda and Freddie, both of whom grew up in Guatemala, developed a deep appreciation for the Mayan people and the difficulties they faced from political strife, genocide, civil war, and governmental government policies. From the beginning, Brenda and Freddie sought my opinion in decisions ranging from product design to marketing to actually name the actual naming of the organization. As the owner of a bookstore, I carried Mayan Hands products. An effort, in an effort to bring attention to the work of the Mayan women, I conceived the germ of this story with the help of Brenda and Ann Kelly, Mayan Hands Albany-based coordinator. After drafting each L story, I visited several cooperatives in Guatemala and met with weavers, shared the story, and received their input. Rainbow Weaver is my tribute to Brenda, Freddie, and the weavers at Mayan Hands. A portion of the proceeds from this book will benefit weavers of the Mayan Hands and Maya Works cooperatives. The proceeds will also help by providing money for the education of children like Ikshil and for health and dental care for the weavers and their families.